All right, so now we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, matrices and vectors. Um, I'm going to give you some cool techniques for creating uh, these matrices, looking at what their size is, uh, and things like that. Okay, so remember we defined this matrix A um, as uh, two rows and three columns. And so if I type in, there's a lot of built-in MATLAB commands, so size is one of them. If I say, what is the size of A, it's going to return how many rows by how many columns. And this is really useful. So remember when we multiplied our matrix by a column vector, for, those, for that multiplication to make sense, my matrix had to have as many columns as rows in my vector. Okay, so that's the only way that these things can match and actually multiply. And the size command, I use this all the time. It tells me how big is the object that I'm working on. Is it a 2 by 3 matrix or a 4 by 4 matrix or a million by 1,000 matrix? It tells me what the size of this thing is in terms of the rows and the columns. Super useful. Okay, so our x vector uh, was this, this column vector. I can say what is the size of x. It's a 3 by 1 column vector, so 3 rows, 1 column. And looking at the size of these two things tells me that I can, in fact, multiply a times x, and what I get out is a 2 by 1 uh, column vector. So the size command is really, really useful. Uh, I use it all the time. Okay, but there are other ways of defining these vectors. So when I defined x, um, I defined it as a column vector 1, 2, 3, and I actually wrote it out, 1 col colon, 2 semicolon, 3, and that you know, put those elements in the first row, the second row, and the third row. But what I could do is I could define vectors using this kind of built-in MATLAB colon command. So if I want just a list of numbers from 1 to 5, I can say x equals 1 colon 5. Okay, so the colon is kind of MATLAB shorthand for I want all of the numbers between 1 and 5. And it defaults, if you don't tell it otherwise, to using integer spacing. So this should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is built in. Um, this is just how MATLAB works. And so this is the kind of thing that you'll have to you know, get a little used to. So if I hit Enter, you'll see that this automatically created a row vector with five elements, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I didn't have to type in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is great. Because if I want to do x equals 1 colon 50, I definitely don't want to type in every single one of those by hand like I did up here. So this is nice shorthand that lets me make big vectors or matrices really quickly. Uh, so if I hit enter, you'll see that this just automatically is creating a big row vector. If I say size of x, it's a 1 by 50 array, which means it has one row and 50 columns. That just means it's a, it's a row vector. Okay, and we did it this way. We said x equals 1 colon 50. I'm going to go back to colon 5 because it's a little bit smaller. So this is a really, really super useful um, uh, command that allows you to define data. So this x is a variable that's in the MATLAB uh, memory, and I can work on it. I can plot x squared. I can add things together, I can multiply matrices, I can, you know, I can do basically simulations or analyze my data, but I have to know how to define the data or, or how to handle it. Okay, good. Um, let's say that I want a vector of data, and instead of being integers from 1 to 5, let's say I want 0, 0 0.1, 0.2, so I'm going to write this out. I want a vector x which is uh, 0, 0, 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, dot, 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 0 0.9, 1.0. So I want all of the numbers from 0 to 1 in increments of 0 0.1. Okay? So again, I could type this out painstakingly by hand. I could say x equals a vector, 0, 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1. I could do that. I could just define this big vector by hand, hit enter, that's my vector. Columns 1 through 5 are these numbers. 
columns six through ten are these numbers, uh, and the last column is, is that one. Or what I could do is I could say, remember, I have this colon notation. So I want to go from zero to one. But now if I give it another middle, another number in the middle, if I say I want to go from zero to one in increments of 0.1. So this is another MATLAB shorthand that tells MATLAB I want a vector that goes from 0 to 1, and the number in the middle, this point 0.1, tells me I'm going to take steps of point 0.1 until I get there. So if I hit Enter, this is much easier right, than typing all of these. I hit Enter, and I get all of these numbers in a vector, just like before. Really cool. Um, and I can, you know, I can make this much, much larger. I could say x equals minus 10 in increments of 0.01 to 10. So this is a lot of numbers from minus 10 to 10 uh, every 0.01. I'm actually going to put a semicolon at the end here because I don't want to print all of those numbers, so I'm going to suppress the output. But now if I look at the size of x, this is going to be huge. It's a 1 by 2001 vector, right? There's a 2001 elements in this, uh, this massive row vector that I've created. And this is much, much easier than typing in all of those elements. That would take forever. And I can do cool things, like I can define a new vector y, and I can say y equals sine of x. I'm going to put another semicolon or else it's going to dump a bunch of data to the screen. y equals sine of all of those values. So now y is a new vector, and I take every element of x, and I take the sign of that number, and then the sign of the next one, sign of the next one, sign of the next one, and I add that, I stack that into a big vector y. So size of y should be the same size as x. And I can do things like plot x by y. And I get this nice sinusoidal pattern for that very, very high resolution x vector that I defined from negative 10 to 10. So you can do some really neat things uh, like this where you can create vectors easily. You can create them with uh, small dt's. Or I could say x equals minus 10 to 10 in increments of 1. y equals sine of x is just sine at all of those values of x in its own big vector. And then again, I can plot x by y. And, you know, it's the same basic idea, except there's not that many x points. I'm only defining x points every, every one spacing, and so the plot doesn't look as nice. OK, so that's a good way of defining uh, vectors x. But what if we want to define our matrices in a similar way? I don't want to be typing in every single number in a matrix uh, forever. That seems like that's going to be really wasteful. So there's lots of common matrices that you're going to use all the time. Like let's say I want a, a 4 by 4 identity matrix. So zeros everywhere except uh, ones on the diagonal. So I can say A equals, and there's a built-in MATLAB command, so plot is built in, size is built in. There's another built-in command called I, that stands for identity. And the number that I give it, tells me how big of an identity matrix I want. So this is going to give me a 3 by 3, I3, is a 3 by 3 identity matrix. If I said I4, it's going to give me a 4 by 4 identity matrix. And you get the idea. I could do I of 6, get a 6 by 6 uh, identity matrix. And this is really useful because I might want to use this matrix, but I don't want to type in all 36 of these numbers. This is much, much simpler. Other, num other matrices that are really useful, what if I want a matrix of all zeros? I want to start with a clean slate and then I'm going to do something to this matrix. So I'm going to start with the matrix of all zeros. So I could say A equals zeros of 4. That gives me a 4 by 4 matrix of zeros. But what if I want this thing to be non-square? What if I want two rows and three columns? Well, this is pretty simple. You just say A equals zeros, and you give it two numbers. I say, well, I want two rows and three columns. Pretty simple. I hit Enter, and I get this nice uh, 2 by 3 matrix. So if I want a 2 by 3 matrix of zeros, I just call this built-in command zeros, and I specify how many rows and how many columns I want. Uh, there's also one called ones. So sometimes I don't want it to be empty. I want it to be full of ones. That gives me a matrix of all ones. And again, if I want it to be square, I could say 1's 3, 3, or 
ones, just give it the, if it's square, I only need to tell it the size of one leg. Uh, OK, so we can create matrices of all zeros, all ones, identity matrix. We can create vectors of different spacing. Really, really powerful. Uh, sometimes I want just random data. Sometimes I want a vector x, which is rand 5 by 1. I want a 5 by 1 random column vector. I can do that built into MATLAB, rand. And if you call rand, it get, this is built in, and it gives you uniformly distributed numbers between 0 and 1. I could also say a equals rand uh, 3 by 4 if I want a 3 by 4 matrix of random numbers. Really useful. I can just easily create a huge random matrix if I want uh, to see what random data looks like. Um, if I want, so this was uniform from 0 to 1. If I want Gaussian data, so like a normally distributed data that's centered at 0 uh, and has standard deviations, I would say a equals rand n. So this stands for normally distributed random number of 3 to 4. And notice now these numbers can be negative or positive. They can be bigger than 1. This is just a kind of a Gaussian normal distribution, the bell curve uh, shape centered at 0 with a unit standard deviation, standard deviation of 1. OK? So lots of ways of creating matrices and vectors. We can always see what the size of an object is by looking at size of a or size of x. Uh, and we can access the elements. If I want the, the 2 by 1 element of a, so the second row, first column, I just say a of 2 by 1. And I pop out the second row, first column of a. OK, really, really useful. Um, Remember how we said we could define x as 1 colon 5, and it gives me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? I can also use this to specify which, which indices. So these are called indexes. This is the, the row index, and this is the column index. We can specify which indices of a matrix I want to select. So let's say I have A. And let's say I just want um, the first two columns of A, or let's say the first three columns of A. I just want this, this 3 by 3 block here. What I could say is B equals A. And remember, I could specify explicitly that I want the 1, 2, 3 rows and the 1, 2, 3 columns. Okay, I could explicitly state that. Or I could say that I want all of the rows and I want the first three columns, the one to three columns. So this actually creates a vector, one, two, three, just like I had up here. But this is a lot cleaner shorthand. So you're going to get really familiar with using these, uh, these shorthand techniques to access various elements uh, of a matrix or you know, create new matrices by, by downsampling. It's very, very useful. You'll get used to this, but it takes some time. OK, we'll talk more about this soon.